thing one would do with a processor. It's like there's a fourth processor, there will be no C compile or something. Mm -hmm. But I think the concept that it's very low energy, there's no central clock processing on the chip, it's all asynchron, uh, is, is on the right track. So, do you know that and what's your judgment on that? I don't know more than anyone else. You probably know more about it. Uh, my, my comment is that uh, I've seen a lot since the 1980s companies building their own smart processor. Many, many, many. Some company by company called the G Machine in the mid 1980s. Many, many, many. And they all get caught in, in, uh, in the fact that if you're Intel, you can speed up the normal processor and crank in some pipeline that will do whatever you are doing uh, better uh, than you uh, getting the same base technology for your fourth processor, transputer processor, waveform processor, or G machine. So, so I'm a little bit skeptical about that uh, for that reason. Uh, but I don't know much about it. But hardware, uh, chip hardware is difficult. I made my master thesis about chip hardware when I thought I had an idea. Uh, but it's very difficult, uh, I think. Uh, if you want to be really far in the future, <coughs> Google is now uh, saying that the problem is not the money <coughs> uh, for, for the processing power, it's the heat and the cost of the energy. And cooling is a problem. So uh, uh, there might be something in the longer future. And I'm, I'm thrilled by what I read Kutfa's concepts of the uh, Zero energy computing. Uh, so, some years ago, I didn't know if it was uh, a physical fact, but you can, in fact, compute with a tremendous power in zero energy. You only need energy when you extract the result, which can be small, and you might need it to, to, to uh, account for errors due to cosmic radiation. But otherwise, you can, you can have a computer uh, running with zero energy. Uh, by having all the symmetrical computations. And there is a patent on, on this, many patents, but one is uh, very interesting. Uh, and that's a technology I believe in, uh, and I would rather hedge for it. It's a little bit further in the future, but it will be an important time. So maybe you should start a company for software tools for this kind of symmetrical processors, because they will be different in many ways in, in how you compute. <coughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suppose the student is uh, doing a prototype of some of the technology which is much in the future. Yes. And you mentioned a lot about in your talk about the right timing. Uh -huh. When do you think we should, we should wait for the prototype to finish or in the last stage it should take on time? It's always good to have a close customer experience. You have the first customer before the first investor. They are doing well. It should be done by the customer. Yes, absolutely. Work together with the customer. And what very often happens, and sometimes some people do that on purpose, is that if you invest in a small company, <clears throat> you know that they will run out of money in six months, and they will still have no income. So they are completely in your hands. They have a million in debt. And then, well, I think we will take over everything, or um, we get a new investment with this value for the company. It's very common, and it might happen on, uh, by mistake or on purpose. So if you can kind of be cool <laughs> for a while, until you have some own momentum, because that will create uh, leverage against investors and, and other actors. So hang around, get a few customers, uh, when you know that you have an own, your, your own dynamic, then you can bring in external capital. And I think also <coughs> that some successful companies, they are very, very low key. Let's say we talked about the symmetrical processors <coughs> or uh, zero energy computing. I think I'm convinced that it will happen. Five years from now, I don't know, 10. 20, 30, I don't know. But <clears throat> if you can keep the company bubbling around this with a very, very low um, burn rate, <clears throat> someday someone will say, oh, this is a great idea, I need to tell them something. Can we go for someone to know this? I 
and they will find your company. So, oh, it's already a company. Let's buy it. And, uh, or, let's work with it. So, if you can just uh, stalk uh, uh, sometimes, it yeah, could be good. I think it was you first. Yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, just a, sh a brief question. Uh, I, I did miss uh, human robot interaction or human computer interface. So is it just implicit? So that's not a special topic, or do you think it's like a hype? Everything, uh, everybody's talking about it, but there's no uh, revenue to it. I think this is really, really a good question, and uh, I didn't have time to mention a lot of things that I'm sure. like about. Uh, one of the things that we talked about this over here yesterday, <laughs> one of the things that no one thinks is a good idea, but I think is a good idea, and it's related to this, is that we are now used to outsourcing. Uh, every big company outsource programmers, um, phone answering, uh, engineers, doctors. <coughs> but at the moment, we are not outsourcing uh, work. I have six children, uh, and I can really need uh, more help in our home. Uh, and I think that it will be somewhere before I can let a new one or loose clean the home. But if I could have a semi-automatic system with a good interface to my children and a good interface to someone outsourced uh, in another country, where you have semi-automatic intelligence, uh, I think that's, and you sell apps for this kind of situation, take care of the system around that. Yes, I had a very general question. What would you say is the value added by AI to normal companies like yeah, you talk about AstraZeneca and Volvo yeah. and other companies? What is the value to them by taking in AI as another component? The way I see it, uh, I mean, um, uh, companies have spent time and money on building an IT infrastructure and they have been busy building databases, internets, uh, normal information, okay, you want some search and all of this kind of boring stuff. It was AI in the 1980s, but it's still a little bit boring. Uh, and now they are looking for other ways of making more money. And I absolutely believe that if you can drive through <coughs> one million uh, publications, uh, medical publications, and find a new drug that will save life and make money. Uh, it's, it's a huge value. It optimizes the energy sector and save the environment and make money. It's, it's a huge. So to me, it's now almost a tautology. If you adapt AI, you make money. Uh, I mean, the, the value is, is from making things more efficient and making things uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So extracting existing inf or I mean information or knowledge from existing uh, systems that already have and to more efficiently use the resources they have already created is, is one yeah, aspect. Yeah, that could be one thing. I mean, it all comes down to doing things that is too expensive or boring to humans to do. Mm. Now, part of that can be done by computer. And that could be scanning it through uh, uh, literature, it could be uh, looking outside, it could also be advanced optimization. <coughs> uh, you can, as a human doc, you can ever try a billion uh, uh, ideas around what kind of pattern will make your business more profitable, what kind of equation will, will uh, uh, target your customers, but the computer system can easily try a billion ideas. Uh, so uh, the short answer is everything that humans does today that has a value, see if there's something of that that is, uh, is boring and inefficient and can be done better with the computer. It has a value because it's in theory can be done by humans, but should be done in a more supportive way. I think that's the end of the show. Thank you very much. We have a small talk about a few days.